like, does it, I know it's, it's Wisconsin, Minnesota, but does not for your first time in, in that situation, have you sensed any returning players kind of getting amped up for, for the situation when it's that other team on the other side of the ice this week? Maybe it's just because I'm, my, I'm not as aware as I probably should be. They, we've had a quick turnaround. Um, as I'm sure Minnesota is feeling the same thing, or I would think Bobby is. On, you know, we had we had done on Saturday. You turn around, you get back. Um, a quick little off day on Sunday, and now we're to Tuesday, and we're going to get on a bus and, and go up there on Wednesday. So there hasn't been a lot of that. Been probably a little bit more focus on cleaning up what happened Friday, Saturday, discussing that, and then turning the page. And we've we've started our process with Minnesota here, uh, starting today. Coach, um, you know, this also marks the start of, of Big Ten play, and I'm wondering, in these last three weeks, what have maybe been your biggest takeaways, some of the big, the more important things that you've learned about this group that's going to help you as you, you know, take this next step in the season? Well, hopefully we can maintain a mentality of resiliency. We, we've been down quite a few times on the road and still found ways to come back a couple of times to come back and win a hockey game. We went through some adversity over our last uh, two weeks, and some we fought through. Uh, the opportunity at North Dakota, we didn't we didn't quite get there. But I I like that we didn't go away, even though we were down. So that that's the positive. Second thing is is we're hopefully going to be a team that can play with depth. We we've got scoring that has been really spread around our group. One of our focuses was trying to get our off our defensemen to be a little bit more productive offensively. That has started. Uh, we wanted to find a goaltender that stepped forward. Uh, Max done that, um, but we also have a lot of holes in our game that we're continuing to try and plug. Our power play has to continue to be better. Our penalty kill was a little leaky this last weekend, so that's something against a team like Minnesota that they can take advantage uh, on the power play. Uh, they've got a lot of guys that can, can zip it around and are, are confident in that building. Um, so, you know, some positives and some negatives. Uh, but we're still a work in progress, and hopefully we'll be in a, a spot come Thursday that we're playing with some confidence uh, when that puck drops. Yeah, Coach, I know you haven't you, – your team hasn't talked about the rivalry that much this week, but what did you know about the rivalry coming to Wisconsin and just the history between these two teams? When I was hired at Minnesota, I was told there was only one thing that couldn't happen and we couldn't get beat by the Badgers. So that I learned a long time ago on the side of, of Minnesota. And then whether it's, it's any sport you talk about in the Big Ten, when you have a border battle like Minnesota and, and Wisconsin, it's, it's unique, it's special, it's historic. Uh, there's a lot that has gone on well. There's times it hasn't gone well. Um, just looking back at what I saw recently, what, what Todd had put together, uh, reading his his piece on Wisconsin, uh, that you know it hasn't been feast or famine. It's been a little bit of uh, give and take. There's been some good and maybe some not so good. And anytime that you get into a rivalry situation, I think you can take records and throw them out the window uh, because there's there's history there. Now we're in a situation where we've gotten off to a good start. They've gotten off to a good start. And both head coaches and their staffs are going to learn a lot about their teams by the end of Friday. Um, and that's what we're after. We, we continue to try and build our daily so that we can have a good week. And that'll be challenged on Thursday and on Friday. Have you been able to pick out anything from the power plays that did go well versus the ones that didn't? Was there something? You can say, go back to them and say, hey, this is, this is something we have to continue to do or something we need to take out of what we're trying to do there. Yeah. You and I talked a little bit about it that night on, on Saturday because you'd asked the question on, hey, how? You know, and I think we were talking about decks. I thought we played, our, our entries were better. We came in with possession. And then our puck movement was really... I thought it was crisp, it was clean, and it was quick. And and so with that, we had our, our puck movement beat the penalty kill pressure, and we had some good looks. You look at the two goals that we scored, and Dex did a really good job of getting his head up and finding somebody that was open. 
and then those guys finished. Um, so those were a couple of things that I thought we took out of our power play that was positive, um, but we've still got a ways to go. Um, Coach, so far, at least statistically, your, your defense is putting up good numbers, goals against the average, save percentage. Um, I just want to get your thoughts on where you think things stand with your defense, you know, how you're feeling about it, what do you like, and what's maybe working so far? The group is bought in to defending in groups of five. We, we've, we had a little issue which was well chronicled on our, on our discipline at killing too many penalties and expending a lot of energy through killing penalties, which I think affected our ability to defend. Um, but when we're, we're staying out of the box and we're not expending that energy, I do like that they're doing it in groups of five. They're doing it throughout the lineup, whether it's, you know, Cillier, Matty D. St. Fowl, uh, you know, Cruz. Those guys are defending just like our our guys in the bottom end of the roster are, is our fourth line guys. It's, it's becoming, hopefully, a mentality that goes throughout our team. Our defensive core is a work in progress, and we're still learning a lot because we've got some transition with some young guys coming in. And the only way you really learn, I think, at this level is by playing and having the experience of some successes and some failures. And that's really what our defensive core is going through. But the, the biggest positive is Ben Mack. He's, he's done a good job that when we have broken down, it hasn't always ended up in the back of our net, which I think gives your team an opportunity, the young guys, to – it doesn't go up on the board when they make a mistake. And that has been a positive uh, piece for us because we didn't know exactly what that would be coming into the season. Kind of a two-parter here. Do you have a chance you're getting Stramel or Lindmark or both back? There's week? a chance. Okay. Yeah, we're still, again, with that because they weren't. That wasn't something that was real short-term, a couple of days. Um, so I'm still, I'm going to lean on the people that know and make sure that we're, you know, if they're going to be in the lineup, they're going to be ready. They're going to be prepared. Uh, they're going to be healthy enough. It's We're not going to put them in a position uh, not to be successful. Um, so right now we're still, it's early in the week. I know it's getting closer to game time and those decisions will be made sooner than later. The other part of that is when you do lose two centers, that changes a lot of what you want to do throughout the lineup. How have you guys had to adjust in finding the right fits? I, I saw your shoulder gets a, sp a, a chance at that last week. How, how, how have you had to kind of piece things together there? Uh, two things. Roster-wise, we were cognizant of trying to have center depth or players that had played that position before. Uh, Scholl had, during his individual meeting, we talked a little bit about that even before these injuries came up. Second thing is, is we discussed early in our process that everybody literally matters. And, and you're seeing that right now. We needed Scholl to step up. Um, Tyson Dick stepped into a lineup and played in the middle one night and on the wall the next. Uh, Mellenbacher came in as, as a guy in the middle and those guys were prepared for that opportunity. And that's why I think we ended up having the success that we had on the weekend. So um, we knew we had some guys that had played that position before and I think it was pretty, I don't want to say seamless, I want to give those guys credit at not shying away from the light when saying, hey, we need you to be here. Those guys had done their work so that they were prepared for that opportunity. One more. Uh, regardless of whether it's Minnesota, when you see a number one on another team that, that you're going into play, does that do you have to address that with your team of like, don't get caught up in in that, that you want to you know, play them like anyone else, but you, maybe you do want to get, let them feel a little bit that that's, there's, there's something big potential to happen there. And what I've learned is we, we discussed it actually Saturday. I said if we, if we win a game on Saturday, they're not going to put a trophy on the bus or on the way back. You know, it was, we better be good. <laughs> um, it, it really doesn't matter who. There's so much parity in our sport. Yes, I understand the history, the rivalry. That 
it, it's a little different nowadays where all these guys kind of grow up together. They're playing against each other in squirts, peewees, bantams, if they're regionally and even if they're not. You've got some guys from Florida that have ran into the guys in Minnesota consistently while they've been going through the developmental process. They, We've got guys, they've got guys that have been at the national program together. They know each other pretty well. And I think there's a wealth of respect on both sides of the fence and that you'll find out if you are not prepared and you're not playing well, you're, you're not only going to get beat, you're probably going to get embarrassed because they're that quality of a hockey team. So we want to take advantage of the opportunity to, to go and look in the mirror a little bit because obviously with what they did at North Dakota was pretty impressive. Uh, you know, North Dakota had to put together a really good game plan and, and execute it on Saturday to beat them. And I don't think that's going to be any different for us. We're going to have to be really good if we want to go in there and get points this weekend.